If you don't remember me from my last post, I'm the guy who had something really weird happen on my airplane trip to see my grandmother. And I'm still on that flight as of the time of this writing. I had to add more because something else happened. Even worse than last time. Where I last left off was when the flight attendant had just informed me that the entire 14-hour flight was going to be in complete darkness. As we're heading west, which means the night is following us. After this disturbing revelation, I settled back in and closed my eyes. I was listening to a story about werewolves, which made me think of my grandmother. I was looking forward to seeing her for the first time in more than a year. Good thing I wasn't wearing my little red hoodie. Knowing my grandmother, she'd be the one eating the wolf. She was the alpha of the house growing up, and my parents seemed to know that. After drifting off, I heard the words wake up whispered directly into my ear. My eyes were suddenly open. I was wide awake. The silence had returned. Nothing but the sound of this giant speeding bullet that I was sitting in, slicing through the night air high above the world. The darkness had also returned. Outside of my window, dark except for the moon, inside the cabin, a few rays of moonlight allowed me to see that I was still inside of the aircraft. A sound of clanking glass came from the front of the plane. It slowly grew louder with each movement. A bit of clanking and then silence in a repeating pattern over and over. Eventually, it got close enough that I could start to see something in the slivers of moonlight that invaded the darkness. It was a dark shape, but it seemed to be a human shape with something in front of it, like it was pushing something. It seemed to move in slow motion. I sat a day in frantic silence, watching it move down the aisle in my direction. It traveled one row at a time, pausing for a bit, then moving on to the next. I then noticed that there was more than one. A second figure followed. Each time the figures stopped, they would turn toward rows on opposite sides. Then the whispering began. They weren't talking, they were whispering. A very slow, drawn-out whisper that matched the speed of their movement. I dared not make a sound or any sudden movements to draw the attention of these figures, but I knew that they would eventually reach me. When they reached the point of just three rows in front of me, I noticed something new. After the whispering, something would follow. It was almost like the whispering would reverse itself back into the figure. But I could see it. It looked a bit like cold winter breath. Something was visibly being sucked away from the row, into the dark figure, followed by the backs of the passengers' heads laying back silently into their seats. I realized I was now sweating, waiting for the inevitable. I guess I must have been breathing too loudly, because suddenly both figures stopped what they were doing and turned slowly toward me and then stood motionless, aiming what I assumed were their eyes directly at me. I sat a day frozen, trying to keep my breaths as shallow as possible, thinking that maybe these things worked off of sound or movement. After they stared at me in silence for way too long to be comfortable, they began their slow motion movements again. This time, they didn't stop. They were coming straight toward me, keeping their eyes on me the entire time. Then they did stop, right in front of me. The one in front leaned in slowly, getting closer and closer. The whispering began, with its face directly in front of me. It started pulling something out of me as it had the others. I couldn't breathe. I was getting lightheaded. And the amount of time it took to blink, a flight attendant was in front of me, asking if I wanted something to drink. I was hyperventilating, staring at her to the side. The lights were back on, and so were the sounds. Are you okay? She asked. I held one hand up, as if to say just a minute. While I caught my breath, I don't know. Was I asleep just now? I don't think so, she said. You looked like your eyes were wide open as I was coming down the aisle. Can I get you something to drink? Okay, yeah. Can I have some water, please? She poured water into a plastic cup for me. I checked my phone. Five hours down. Nine more hours to go. Nine more hours in the airplane. Nine more hours over the ocean. Nine more hours of night. Nine more hours of darkness. Have you ever woken up from a nightmare and decided to keep yourself awake for a while in order to avoid falling right back into that nightmare? That's what I was trying to do. Whether it was a dream or some alternate reality, or even just pure reality, I did not want to go back there. My playlist moved on to a new story, something about the dance macabre and Halloween. On my 16th birthday, my grandmother pulled me to the side and said that she had something to tell me in private. We walked outside into the backyard, shutting the sliding door behind us. She told me to take a seat at the table by the pool. 
I did, and she sat her day as well. She lit up a cigarette, taking a few puffs off of it. We both sat her day in silence for probably 30 seconds while she smoked and looked at me. She then said, Jan, I'm not going to be here forever, but I need to know that you're ready before I go. What do you mean, Lola? Are you okay? Yes, Oppo. Don't worry. I'm fine, but it's time for me to go home. Before I go, I have a special birthday gift for you. Using her right hand, she reached over and pulled a beaded bracelet off of her other wrist. She then took my arm and slid the bracelet over my hand. The black and gray beads looked pretty cool. She continued, keep this on whenever Lola is not around to protect you. I looked at her, confused. She just stared at me with a you listen to me look on her face. Okay, Lola, I said. I decided to try and use the airplane's Wi-Fi to connect to the outside world and try to assure myself that I was still part of it. I avoided Reddit because I wanted to stay away from anything that might cause nightmares right now. Instead, I looked up info on where I was going. The Philippines. According to a website I found, local traditions say they're celebrating something called Ghost Month right now, and that there were rules that you had to follow in order to not be taken by ghosts. Normally, I'd say I don't believe in this type of thing, but after what had been happening to me on this flight, I wasn't so sure. Just then, I heard my name whispered loudly into my right ear. I didn't even get to take a drink of my water before. Without warning, I was sucked right back into the darkness, as if I was pulled by something. A split second before, I heard a loud suction sound, and then, the lights and sound were gone. Once again, to my relief, the dark figures were no longer there. Although, I guess I shouldn't have counted those chickens so early. After a long wait and deafening silence, save for the sound of wind outside the cabin, the speaker static returned, and then, so had the slow whispering. This time, I tried listening intently to the whisper, to try and make out what it was saying. Eventually, there was also a new sound, coming from the front of the plane. It was different than last time. Instead of clanking glass, it was of a dragging sound, something very heavy and metallic, dragging slowly down the aisle, pausing in between each drag. I began to detect a faint smell of seawater, like when you're on a boat or near the ocean. A very different figure started to emerge from the darkness. This was not exactly human-shaped, like the other ones. It was much taller and appeared to be hunched over, like a deformed giant of some sort. Its head almost touched the ceiling, even in its hunched-over stance. There was nothing in front of this one. Perhaps the dragging sound was coming from behind him. I tried to hunch down behind the seats in front of me so it wouldn't find me. But I knew this wouldn't do any good. As it drew nearer, another sound became apparent. The sound of dripping and the sound of flesh on a damp floor. I tried to pretend I was asleep, as the rest of the passengers appeared to be, hoping that he'd walk on by if I looked to be unconscious. I kept one eye cracked slightly open, trying to monitor what was happening. The dragging had now become excruciatingly loud, and I could finally see what was dragging. There was a chain wrapped multiple times around the figure, attached to a large metal sea anchor dragging behind him. Whatever was dripping, it was coming off of him, leaving a trail down the aisle. I must have opened my eye to wide, because just then, having almost moved past my aisle, he stopped moving and slowly turned back in my direction. I was sure he must have been looking directly at me, although I couldn't see well enough to see if he even had eyes. My nightmare began to come true as he turned and started moving into my row. At his slow motion pace, right toward me, he didn't even have to walk. He just moved his head and arms in my direction. I couldn't handle it anymore. I threw my arms up over my face and began screaming. No, stop. Help. Somebody help me. Turn on the lights. Ding. What was that sound? I looked up. The fastened seatbelt's light had turned on. A split second later, the owl lights were back on as well. And so were the sounds of the airplane. The giant creature with the stench of seawater was gone. I looked down at my phone to see that we were only an hour away from landing in Manila and it was still completely dark outside, save for the moon. Thirteen hours in the dark, and still another hour to go. It would be 11 p.m. in their time zone when we did land. That meant another full night of darkness on top of the 14 hours of night on the plane. Oh God, I hope this isn't some new way that vampires have found to live without sunlight. A voice came over the crackly speaker. We should be landing in just under one hour. We've certainly enjoyed flying with you. 
and we wish you a wonderful time at your final destination. Wherever that may be, and if you'll be staying in the Philippines, be sure to observe the rules for Ghost Month, said the announcer over the speaker. I hope this gets better when I get to my grandmother's house. Subscribe or I will haunt your house. If you like this video, please do comment, like, and subscribe for more. Thanks for hearing. See you in the next one.